Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. In the chapel, he mocks proud mockers but gives grace to the humble. Proverbs 3 34. Um, just trying to remember who I am, where I came from, and keeping it real. So, um, all right, totally hooked. I don't have anything, but I do have some things in the basket. Uh, first one, of course. I am forcing myself to do this, and I know, I, I think I've figured myself out a little bit. <laughs> so I've been working on this one just a little bit, and it is the November kit. I want to get it done, and I have progress, but I have figured out that um, the older I get, the more I don't want to have to do row counters and blah, blah, blah. While this is beautiful, it's more time intensive, and... I am using my crochet at night to relax so I don't want to have to use my brain and this is something I just figured out about myself and so this one right here is kind of I'm forcing myself to do a couple of rows a week a couple of rows here and there you know I want to do at least an inch but yeah it's not going now, I also have the Geo still in timeout. Don't think that I've done that one because that one's the same way. Um, I guess because I have to stop and think and use row counters. And part of my problem is, is that I haven't found a way to mark my spot on my diagram uh, without marking up the pattern. And I like to keep the patterns and reuse them, but I just... Ugh, can't find my spot don't want to write on the pattern you know so I don't know the other one that I've been working on of course is this and I did one modification if you remember I briefly talked about it when I started it um, I didn't like how thick that bump is right there see it Ooh, right there it's hard to do it reverse in the camera <laughs> That's why I don't point to things in the camera because it's always reverse. Um, so, I have done one complete ball on this. The bump, you can see I still have the row. And the bump was just too thick for this yarn. If they had used a thinner yarn, I think it would have looked even better. Um, but, and... and you can see it it's kind of there kind of is a bump where these two meet right here so I still have a small bump it's just when I did it it's a back pole double crochet and that offsets it so much that it made it really thick and and just I don't know just really thick and I didn't like the way it laid it didn't seem to lay flat that way so I just modified it and instead of doing back pull I just did a double crochet um, I think it makes it look a little bit better for my taste and therefore one modification to the pattern but I love it um, there you go let me see here um, I'll see if I can find my little end and show you because I mean I just started this ball and I don't even see where it's at. Right in here someplace, I did this last little section right here is where I tied in, but I don't see it right now. And the way I tie in makes it very hard to see. Um, this is terrible when you can't even find it in your own work. I know it's in here. This is terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to find it right now. But um, along this edge, I just tied in too. Just to finish this row. Shouldn't be this hard to find. So one of these days I'll do a, a video on how I tie in. And you'll understand why I can't find it. Because <laughs> there's no ends. There's no ends to weave in. There's no anything. My granny showed me how to do it. And I've always done it that way. And I didn't know I ever did it different 
until I heard people saying, got to weave in all my ends. The only ends I have is at the beginning and the end. So even when I change colors. So, well, no, when I change colors, I do have little ends of the whatever I changed from to weave in. So, all right. So someplace in this, I want to say right here, maybe, maybe right there. Someplace in this row, I have um, the start of this ball. So each ball will stop, will not go as far as this. It won't make it that big, but it is going to be bigger. Um, it won't go, the balls won't go as far, do as many rows because the rows are getting bigger. So there's that. The other issue that I have, and it's not really an issue, it's just something I deal with because I love this yarn. If you look at the yarn, it's got a lot of halo. When you get down to the end of the skein and there's just, you know that when it's pushed flat and it's just like you can see through it almost, it starts to stick because of the halo and it doesn't want to pull out. So I stopped and ball wound it, had a little ball about this big when I finished working with the other skein. So, but I mean, that's easy. I, I like it. It's the halo is what causes it. And it also it kind of feels like a homespun or hand spun that way. So yeah, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the fact. And if you don't like that, then that yarn probably is not for you, but it's amazing yarn. So, I've lost my hook to that one. I think I put it in the bag, but who knows. Uh, so, those are the only two crochet items that I'm working on. Ooh. Upstairs on the other wheel, I do have that gray commercial, real slick stuff from the rug that Worm ate at Christmas. I have not worked any on it because it's up there. And I'll explain that here in a little bit. But, I did move on to the Romney top. Oh, wait, I need to back up because in the dye pots comes first. So, in the dye pots, I got all of the primitive. I was calling it heritage breed or domestic. Yeah, no, the other one's domestic. That one's Romney top. And this one, I think I was calling primitive or heritage and it's primitive breed. So, I, uh, oh, I have to sneeze. <coughs> no, sorry about that. So, I'm not upstairs because it's super cold, and the fireplace is down here, and it's like 72 degrees down here, and really cold up there. So, um, the lighting is not best to show you this. I tried to leave on that light back there, but it kept, like, when the camera would catch it, if I went this way, the camera would catch it, and it would glare. And it gave me this little halo thing around my head, so I didn't do that. And this right here this section is eggplant dark purple it does not look the same as it does in that thing and then it fades up to a paler purple it is not gray okay and there's not a whole lot I can do I, they say if you hold up like something of a different color maybe it'll no it's still looking more gray than it is but this deep, deep, this is deep, deep, rich eggplant purple, and it is beautiful. I love it. So, um, it fades up to this pale purple, uh, almost a mauvey purple up here. So, um, I'm super happy with this. Now, I did all thousand yards this way. So this is enough that it can make a project, a, a decent sized project. Um, I use little tags. I simply put a different number of ties on each one. My scanner counts it off two yards at a time. So I had 161 clicks times that by two. That made it 322 yards. It is a post-it note, so my hair is sticking to it. And then this is the one that had two ties. So each one of these stays with each skein until I get ready to um, market it. If I decide to market it, which we'll get to that here in a little bit. But each one of the, those has their own. One I did two tie, and then of course I used the 
tops because they can't really go without four ties. So I've got two tie, three tie, and four tie, and it's 1,096 yards. So keep in mind that when, oh, I'm so sorry. Keep in mind that when I'm saying it's 1,000 yards, that means that's a two ply, so that means I actually spun over 2,000 yards to make that 1,000 yards. So if you're new, that's where it's at, okay? Uh, now, I did move on and put the Romney top on my wheel. Um, this is amazing, amazing, amazing. Let me see here. We'll just pull from here. And it spins like butter. It is super awesome, super smooth. Um, it does everything that you would want a nice wool to do. Now keep in mind that I got this for like, I think the most expensive one I got out of the three, I got that domestic, the primitive, and the Romney top. And I didn't give anything over $8.50 a pound. So each pound has four, or no, two eight ounce balls like this. So if you go to a store and you're buying a four ounce or eight, in, eight ounce braid, you're getting a fraction of this. And when you give, you know, $20 for it, it is what it is. So I found a really good deal on this. I love the RH Lindsay. Now they don't have a large selection. What they have is what's brought to them and processed and then they sell. So, or what comes from, I don't know if they have their own flock or whatever, but for their prices, they're amazing. And I ordered six pounds all together last year and I hadn't had a chance to do it until I did, I was doing those kits. If you remember, my goal was to try different acrylic yarns. Um, I've opened a few people's eyes to the fact that acrylics have changed since my granny had them. And that's a good thing. Uh, this year, I am trying to do more spinning. And, sorry, I'm fussing. Uh, but that Romney top is spinning like, but it is. I'm going to turn my camera here in a second. Let me see. Um don't mind my coffee and stuff uh, but my this Romney top is spinning like butter super duper consistent like far less bobbles than I've seen in a lot of merino um, super super fun spin um, it like I said messing with the camera um, like I said it spins like butter it's amazing. So if you get a chance to get some of their Romney top, this stuff is awesome. It's awesome, awesome. Um, my goal is to spin all two pounds again. And just to let you know, I spin three bobbins full. Then I take two and I ply them off on my, I want to say it's a country time. I call it a jumbo just because it's big bigger than my other one so um, but I believe it's a country time Ashford country time uh, thing I can't even think of the words oh my goodness so I spit ply them off on this then when I get two bobbins full like that then I actually skein them off and I keep going so I've got three bobbins and some of those full and then skeining all going on at the same time and I will do the whole two pounds that way before I put it in dye pot. So, um, I've decided that if I ever get, like this one was a thousand yards, if I ever get where I can break it down into four skeins, I'll do two one color and two the other. But for the most part, I think I'm just going to do them in lots of three. 
a thousand yards. I don't have to sell them that way, but if somebody's looking for some for a project, you can make a pretty decent sized project that way. <coughs> so, I'm happy with the way that's going. Um, like I said, I still have the commercial up on the other wheel, and I haven't worked up there. Uh, let's see. I think that is really all I've been working on this week. Um, well, not really. So that's the only thing fiber I've been working on this week. Um, RJ's World and the farmhouse kind of go together. He, uh, his old green truck, I don't know if you knew, broke down. And roommate's dad has a shop out here full of tools. And we've been kind of working to try and get it. We store lawnmowers in there and different stuff. Roommates' motorcycles are in there. Um, but there's a bunch of tools. And RJ's old green truck broke down. And he has it in the shop. And he has been working on it in there. So, um, it does have a, a gas heater in there too. So, he's not freezing, freezing. Unlike in here this morning I woke up, it's like, I don't know the actual degrees outside, but I know with wind chill it said like 14. And I do think, I think they said negative 14. I don't want to say that because it's really, it is cold. So, um, <clears throat> I've had the fireplace going. And, uh, this morning I got up and there was frost on all the windows. So I did turn the heater up just a little bit. Um, we keep the central heat in there at 67, so we don't have to pay a lot of money to run it. Um, the heat is run off of propane, and the AC is run off of electric. So we can serve, and we keep that set at 67. And then we make this part of the house, which is right off the kitchen and stuff. It, it's just kind of where we hang out after work and chill out. So... I've got the big TV in here. We have TV up in the front room too, but we have a big TV in here. And uh, we sit here and we'll drink wine. We will drink coffee. We will, you know, we eat dinner and come down here and just spend the rest of the evening chilling out down here with the fireplace going. And it's like 74 in here with the fireplace going and no central heat in there. <laughs> So, it stays warmer down here with the fireplace. Um, and so, yeah. I did crank the heat up just enough to thaw out all the windows this morning. And then I turned it back down to 67. And it's just a difference on how cold it is outside. And these windows are old. They condensate. So, they've got moisture on them. So, yeah. I got them all thawed out. <laughs> Doing a little laundry. But, um, RJ will be down, back down this weekend, uh, to work on the truck some more. I am going to order his parts tonight so that he can get them put on. Uh, he's been taking it apart piece by piece and setting the parts on the back of the truck and cleaning up everything in it. And then he's going to put it back together with the new parts. And he hopes that's going to fix it. So we'll see how that goes. He is doing an amazing job. The truth is the parts are only costing him. They're costing him less than $500. And there's a lot of stuff that he's getting. New head gasket. Um, hoses. Uh, thermostat. Exhaust manifolds left and right. Uh, head gasket. Kit. Um, what else? There was a bunch of stuff. Uh, everything from oil filter to air filters to some kind of breather that he found. And, and we don't always know what it is. But I will tell you, rockauto.com helps. Because you literally put in your, what truck you have. And you have to know whether it's a, a 5.8 liter or 5.6 liter or whatever. You have to know your engine. Okay, just the size. Once you do that, if you know that it's apart from the coolant or whatever, you just click on them and they have little pictures 
that's how we found the little, I don't remember what it was called, but he actually wrote down baby air filter. And I was like, dude, you have to show me because I don't know what that is. And he goes, it's this thing, mom. And I said, okay, so where did it come from? And he says, well, it hooks to this. It runs into that. And that's, I was like, okay, so that's the airflow system. So it's got to be under one of these. And we found it by the picture. <laughs> so um, that's terrible to say, but yeah, it works. And Rock Auto, is, it makes it easy for people like RJ and I that kind of sort of can take things apart and put them back together with new parts but that's all we can do um sometimes figuring out he he's talked to the guy at salvage he's had to talk to the guy you know um he's had help a lot of help don't think that he's doing it by himself but he couldn't do it without the help because like he he said mom i understand take it off take everything off in order, lay it out, and then put it all back, you know, put the new part in and then put it all back. He said, but sometimes I don't understand the steps of how to get to that. You know, he says, I don't know how to start. So he's learning a lot. He really is. And he's rebuilding that little truck, just redoing it and putting about $500 in it plus his work and should make him a good little truck again. So the other thing that was going on in the farmhouse and this is just so I was working on the back bathroom and the sink is not draining so roommate got under there and made sure the pipe was sealed the drain like took it out cleaned the trap put it all back up um it still wasn't draining matter of fact it drained worse so I poured some Drano down it and yeah, still not draining. So I think we're, Ruben and I were talking and we think we're going to take it off and out in the shop, roommate's dad has one of those little, it's just a little small auger thing. We're going to maybe auger out that pipe because you can see it going right into the wall. So maybe if we do that. Because it doesn't drain, it clogs up very fast. I mean, like, turn it on, turn it off, you'll have water sitting in there. So, uh, unless that pipe is, like, full, 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 and not draining at all, which it is draining, it's just not draining, it is draining a trickle. I'll say that right now. You can pour a cup of water in there, and it takes all day for it to trickle away. So, um... It sound, I think the clog is up closer. I don't, I don't know. I don't think the clog is that far out. So I think we can get it with that little auger thing. We just haven't gotten back in there because I'm also looking for the insulation things. I talked to roommate and at the farmhouse, we used to um, seal up RJ's room for leaks, anything in the winter because of his asthma and his lung issues and the cold air really really would take it out of him so I used to use those insulation kits that you use the blow dryer and they go clear you know it's like double stick put the plastic up and then you blow dry it and it goes clear you can't even see it there so your curtains cover the trim and it doesn't look like anything's there but the window sealed up and it makes it so I told roommate I said we need to get some of those for the windows on the north uh, side of the house and roommate agreed, but I haven't been able to find them. So I'm going to have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's. And it's this house is actually built really smart. We have all these beautiful windows, but there's only one, two, three, four on the north side of the house. Yeah. So it is what it is. This room has two big windows, but the north side nothing and that's because it's in the washroom uh, or in the back store it we have wood stored in there but the washroom is right off of it and so the kitchen has no window it's the window is in the bathroom in, in the back my bathroom um, it's a little window so I'm gonna do that one there's one in my bedroom 
and roommate has two windows in that room but only one is on the north side so we're gonna do all of those we're going to seal those babies up for the winter because when it's negative 14 outside they all seem to be drafty just saying so we've been doing that um the last thing is, is that poor little hitch um we were playing i guess it was this is thursday that i'm recording i'm a little late but i was late uploading the other one because i had issues um uh, we were playing monday and he jumped at the rope something he's done a thousand times when he came down he twisted his leg somehow and he yelped it is not broken uh they think he has a soft tissue injury they gave him he's taken a pain pill that they gave him it's kind of like ibuprofen for dogs and he's got a couple of days of that to take first night he was just carrying it he wouldn't use it at all the second day he kind of every once in a while would touch it down today he's walking on it but limping which is an improvement so um hopefully by a week out she said give it a week if it's not a week then he may have done some serious damage so next monday <laughs> we will see if he's doing better he's doing so much better each day but he does have pain pills so i don't know if the pain pills are helping him he does sleep a lot and curl up you know he's been calm she said kennel rest but i don't want to put him in his kennel his kennel's in the back room in that cold he sleeps around a lot and he lays around a lot during the day in the evening it's the only time i have to work to keep him calm so um and he pretty much has quit jumping up on things like he want to jump up on my lap he quit because his leg hurts so he's not jumping around as much i don't physically get up and play with him so that means he doesn't get i do have to get onto worm who is asleep in roommate's chair but i do have to get onto worm a little bit in the evening but pretty much we're just keeping him calm keeping him on his little pain pill it's improving if it doesn't get better by monday he goes to the vet for some rads and all that stuff radiographs so we will see how it goes poor guy um he's still a puppy in in a way he's just like three is what we're guessing so he's still and being a, a blue healer that means they're like super super energetic yay but he does good um but he is healing so uh like i said the first day he just carried it wouldn't use it at all and it's his back leg so yeah all right i think that's all i've got for you today oh ooh. i'm not sleepy i don't know why i'm yawning other than the fireplace is going and i'm getting toasty warm <laughs> i do have to work half day my schedule is a little bit mixed up but i don't have to work um saturday so i do have a friend and i going to a new yarn shop i'll try and sneak some video if i can um i'm hoping maybe they have some roving and some spinning stuff i don't know but we'll see what they've got as far as yarn and so we're gonna we're planning a trip down there we're gonna be down there it's in tulsa so um it's probably 30 minutes from here so yeah we'll see she says she's been there once. She says if it is still what she remembers, it's pretty awesome. So, yeah. I'm hoping. Who knows? Maybe I'll find a new little yarn to sneak in and do a project with. But uh, the other thing that I haven't really talked about that's going on in my world or in the farmhouse is there is a place called the Hippie Farmer Farmer's Market. It's 24... It's all year round though it's a shop and they have homegrown meat fresh milk from people who actually milk they have to meet the guidelines okay so it's from local dairies local farmers and she makes them meet all the guidelines um during christmas i went in there and i noticed that they had a lot of acrylic crochet and I told her, 
I went in and talked to her and, and I said, look, I spin yarn. She looked at me and she goes, oh my God, I was trying to do my drop spindle last night and it kept breaking. <laughs> and so she's trying to teach herself to spin, which is, you know, everything in God's timing. I'd been thinking about going in there for weeks and just say, hey, you know, starting with maybe this purple yarn, caking it, caking one and leaving some in Hanks and then, um, taking maybe a sample of my work and putting it in there. Well, I uh, finally stopped and I was like, hey, I've had this idea, but, and I told her, I said, at, at some markets, I sell out. We do amazing. At other markets that we've tried, other booths, nothing. I said, it depends on the day of the week. And it depends on the people that come through that day, you know. So I told her, I said, think on it. See if it's something that you might want to carry in your shop. And then maybe we can put something in here, you know. Uh, she said, okay. I told her in the meantime, you know, practice her drop spindling. Um... I'm going to put, I'm going to grab a couple of samples of raw yarn or raw roving to give her uh, so that she can actually practice on some wool. She's been using her dog hair. Hey, you use what you got when you're learning. So I'm just going to take her, you know, little small pieces and let her see if she can progress through that. Um, dog hair is not easy. To spin it has no crimp it has no memory it has no barbs to grip she is trying to learn on essentially a slick fiber so and you want something with barbs and and grip and crimp when you're trying to learn to spin because it just grips together better so I will take her a couple of samples um, I've got a friend who's going to give me a sample of superwash merino I don't like superwash. I don't have it around. I don't keep it around because it's, in my book, over-processed. And it's so slick. Yes, it's soft. But there's so much of the natural crimp and loft gone out of that superwash that it's not pleasant for me anymore. So, um, I think the only one that I did an entire 8 ounces of was a pink roving that RJ bought me that was superwash merino. He's never bought it for me again and I don't want it anymore. <laughs> so, but I did. I made him a yarn. Uh, but I'm going to take her some of this Romney top that I'm spinning and I'm going to take her a little nub, you know. I don't know. Let me see if I can show you. I I'm just going to take her like... Ugh, this much of each. So that she can get, you know, the feel. And she can figure out what she likes to spin. And I will talk to her about, you know, ordering her own from R.H. Lindsay if she wants to do that. Because it is affordable. Um, they make it super, super affordable. This draft's really easy. And it's super consistent she could spin that and she's doing it on a drop spindle so I'm gonna take my drop spindles um, and go from there so uh, that is an adventure that I'm trying to start I don't I'm very very I don't know if I want to do it but it could be fun and it could be a new platform for me selling my yarn I mean that's just sitting there I've got my time and my materials into it but it hasn't screamed at me this is gonna be like I did roommate sweater you know I haven't felt that draw to it, but I sure as heck had fun spinning it and dyeing it. So, yeah. Um, all right, I'm going to get off of here. I'll let you know next week how that adventure goes. I meet her Tuesday, Saturday. I go to a yarn shop. I will try and steal y'all some video um, and just see where we go from there. Um, if the lady at the, the uh, farmer's market will let me videotape her, then maybe we'll make a video there too. I don't know. But 
All right, I'm off of here. You guys have a great day. I am going to get dressed and take a shower and go to work. And hopefully you'll keep right on watching and we'll become great friends. Talk to y'all later. Bye.